Hey there, this is Kamal, and I just wanted to share with you guys the details about a repository that I came to know a few days back, which outlines all the free resources that you might need when you're trying to create a new website. So this is the repository that I was talking about, and this was created by Brad Traversy. So he's a web developer and a YouTuber as well, and he has been in this YouTube community for a long time. He's a very good teacher, and I don't know how he does it, but he literally has videos on all the concepts that you might need to search for in YouTube. So he has many crash courses starting from the basics to advanced as well and on all of the topics that revolves around web development and not only web development on other topics as well. So he literally has playlists of crash courses and all of those things and all of them are very detailed and in depth so to say. So it contains all the details or things that you need to know to get started with it. So he explains things in a very simple manner. So if you want to check out his channel, the link for that will be available in the description down below. And if you like his content, then make sure to subscribe to his channel as well. Alright, so back to the repository. So this contains many of the free resources that you might actually need. So it goes from UI graphics to image compression and all of that. So if you click on this, you will go to individual sections and each of this section at least has 5 to 7 uh, minimum alternatives that you can choose from and it has UI graphics fonts, colors, icons. So generally when it comes to icons, we generally choose font awesome, but there are actually many other alternatives to font awesome as well. That's the same thing with colors and fonts as well. So apart from that, you have stock photos, which are actually very important for our websites as you need free photos to showcase in your website and stock videos as well, because some websites actually need videos. So you can do that then sound effects and stock music so if you want to add a bit of pop to your websites you need music in that so if you want that music you can just go to these websites and the vectors and clip art or product and image mockups are generally useful when you're trying to create a product page which categorizes all the products that you have there you actually need to create a mockup so there are many alternatives that you can choose from some of them are premium but as you can see it's available for free as well as premium but if you don't like this, you can just go for the other alternative that is there here and HTML and CSS templates. So this is actually quite useful when you want to get started with a basic template first. So you can just go to these websites and select a template and work on with it. And there are many CSS frameworks. So I generally work on Bootstrap, but apart from Bootstrap, there are many frameworks that you can choose from. There are some not that popular as well, but are lightweight and are quite useful and very fast comparatively. So then you have CSS animations, so you don't need to actually write the animations or code the animations yourself. You can just use these libraries to create that animations and JavaScript animations as well, UI components and kits. Then you have the UI components specific for React, then Vue.js and AngularJS and Svelte as well. Then you have design systems and style guides as well. So these are the style guides or the resources that a particular company uses like Apple design resources, which contains or details Apple users in their own website. I don't know if you can use these things for free or not. Like, so these are style guides used by a particular company, but even if you don't copy and paste them directly, you can just, you know, get inspired and create something that looks similar and has been inspired from that design. And apart from particular company, there are also that are generic as well, like and design or some other things that you can use. And after those style guides, you have online design tools that you can use. So Figma is one of the popular one. So apart from Figma, you have Vector and Canva. So Canva is a very good website that you can use as well. Then other than this, there are many other websites or resources that you can use. Then you have the downloadable design software. So if you don't have Photoshop or if you don't have the license to use Photoshop, then you can use some other alternatives that they have here. GIMP is actually a very good Photoshop alternative. And apart from that, you have other, you know, design software that you can use. Blender is used for 3D modeling and creating animations. And we also have design inspirations in the last. So this is a list of all the websites that showcase different designs that you can use. So Dribble is one of my favorite websites that I generally use. So I'm not a UI expert, so I don't create UIs. I generally work on the backend side. So if I want to create a website which is good looking, I generally go to Dribble and search for a particular template and you know, try to implement things from that template, not recreate it exactly, but just get ideas on the color scheme and all the things that you can design on that. So there are many alternatives that you can choose from and search for inspiration from here as well. And lastly, we have the image compression. So whenever it comes to images, you don't want to actually place a large image on your website as that slows down things a lot. So if you want to 
place images in your website you have to first compress them so that they are actually of the same clarity and same quality but are of much less size so that when the website tries to load your website it's actually quite fast as it doesn't need that many resources to render a large scale image so that is quite useful if you're trying to include images in your own website and tiny png is one of the most popular options that you can get and it's actually free so you can use that and also we have others which are uncategorized stuff that you can use from so if you want to actually include things into this repository you can just initiate a pull request but make sure that the resource is actually free or it has a free version to it as well and also see to it that it's already not there in this list so you have to add something that is new so that's it guys so this is the repository which outlines all of the things that you might actually need so try to implement this in your next project so that's it for this video guys thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one